Hello, I am Michael Gaucher, and I am building a .NET program using C Sharp WPF, and I'm going to connect to a SQL Server database all on a low-end computer, or what people would call a low-end computer, that it comprises an Intel Pentium processor with four gigabytes of RAM. I want to take a step back to the concept of um, RSS feeds. RSS feeds, which are synonymous with websites that uh, distribute their information using the RSS format, um, I represent that in this program using tabs. And each tab is synonymous with a website and that website's RSS feed that I've subscribed to. And so um, what I want to do was take the tabs as a way to dynamically drive the user interface. A tab is um, really, it's essentially a button. And a what we call a tab control is really a composite user interface uh, device for automating the movement to, between different buttons and their up and down states, right? And so when you click a tab, Visually, you want it denoted that that tab is actually the uh, active tab. It's the it's the primary tab that you see, and all other tabs should be recessed in the background in some form or fashion, at least conceptually. And we see that here with Microsoft's implementation of the tab control concept. So, <clears throat> I see the cat down the road has brought dragonfly for uh, dinner. So. Um, and so you want to use those tabs to um, basically uh, uh, bridge between the feed and the data for the feed. And so it's extremely important that we don't just get the content part right with the article content, with the headlines, that sort of thing. You could get all of that correct and truly botch the tabs. And it's so easy to botch the tabs. What I do not show as an example here is how we optimize the performance of tabs because when you use a tabbed interface and you're interacting with data uh, like this, then you run into uh, performance um, situations that you can uh, definitely deal with su successfully. But before you even encounter all of that, you have to have an approach to tabs. How are you going to build them? How are you going to uh, include and exclude tabs? Whether or not you disable certain tabs? Uh, do you prevent the movement from one tab to the other while data is being loaded in one tab, right? So those are all questions that we don't deal with here, but those are things you should be aware of. And we're also using the WPF API and not the XAML markup for defining the tab control and the tabs therein. We could absolutely do that. Even while we're writing code that is dynamically driven, um, there are ways to link XAML to databases through automatic data binding, and XAML provides um, complete provision for that. And we could have gone that route. And if you follow the documentation for XAML very closely, in all actuality, following that approach is a faster, quicker way to build a program. It's, it's uh, substantially faster and quicker to build it that way. But I went with the WPF API in C Sharp. I went with the explicit API implementation so that I can round the corners on interact interactivity so that I can um, put together this user interface with greater uh, finesse and greater range of control over the sequence of operations and how different elements of the user interface uh, coordinate. This is purely a code discussion. So I want to generate tabs in this user interface application. And this has been accomplished. But let's bring the microscope into the code itself. I used Microsoft Help Viewer to identify 
that I need an instance of the tab control class to produce tabs. The tab control class is instantiated on line 42 and assigned to the reader tabs variable declared at the class level in main window .xaml.cs. The reader tabs variable when added to the root content declared in the XAML file associated with main window .xaml.cs will contain the tabs that we want to interact with. A tab represents an RSS feed. When the tab is clicked, we want the headlines for the related feed to show underneath the tab. An event handler in .NET is one way to accomplish this. An event handler binds action to a function that will execute code associated with that action. In this case, the action we are interested in is the act of clicking a tab. The event handler setup on line 50 relates the action of clicking a tab with our custom logic. The logic will be shown later. On lines 52 and 53, we pull data from the database into variables where we can access the data that drives the software program. On line 55, we have a list of all RSS feeds. This is a unique list of names, the name of each RSS feed. Lines 57 through 73 is where we create the tabs that go into the instance of the tab control defined on line 42. On line 59, we set up a tab in Microsoft.NET WPF. This is called a tab item. We set the header for the tab item to the value of the name retrieved from the list of names on line 57. We assign that value to the header on line 61. Keep in mind, the description of the software component parts is described in Microsoft documentation for WPF, which I access through Help Viewer. While setting up the tab item on line 59, the body of the tab is set to a list box on line 62. This is where all the headlines will go. That list box is instantiated with the display member path property set to headline text. Headline text is a field in the collection that we are referencing in the name of RSS feeds and RSS article. Use of the display member path lets us use the item source property later on to induce automatic data binding in Microsoft WPF. So that way when we connect a part of the RSS feed article collection to the list box through the item source property, WPF mechanisms will be in play to automatically put all the items in that list into the list box for us so that we don't have to do for loops and other logic to make that happen. I add the tab item to the tab area on line 70. 
Line 69 is irrelevant to that task and exists for convenience whenever our own code needs to access the tab item. The code sequence on line 70 relates directly to the variable on line 42. We can restate this as we create an area for the tabs on line 42 and create those tabs on line 59 and add the tabs to the tab area on line 70. That is the core of what we have done. So line 42, line 59, and line 70 are all connected and those three lines is what manifests the tabs on the screen. On line 72, we access the list box instance from line 62 and set up an event handler. What that does is anytime a headline is clicked in the list box, custom logic will execute in reference to the headline that was clicked. The event handler on line 143 is connected to the list box when that relationship is made on line 72. Whenever a headline is clicked in the list box, this function executes. When this function executes, it in turn executes the apply article function on line 150. I've collapsed the definition of the function on line 150 as its details are not relevant to the discussion here. The function on line 162 is that very same function connected to the tab area on line 50. Whenever a tab is clicked, this function executes and does four things. First, it validates the status of the feed data for the purpose of accessing the feed. We would avoid accessing the feed data through an invalid position. So when a tab is clicked, we want to make sure that the numeric position re referencing that tab is a valid numeric position. Not only does that keep the program from crashing, keeps our code from generating an error, but it allows us to run this function with supreme confidence. Second, it grabs the feed name from the chosen tab. This is not the only way we could have done this. We could have stayed with the numeric ID on line 164, but in this exercise, it was far more practical to retrieve the name on line 168 and use it to access the list of feed articles for a given RSS feed. Third, this function sets up the feed headlines based on the feed name. A minimal set of validations are in place to ensure this is done correctly. Fourth and finally, this function forwards the selected headline, if any, to the apply article function on line 150. Reusability is an active concept here since the apply article function is accessed from line 145 and line 181. You'll see that function access from both of those lines. At the core of this discussion is the operation that takes place on lines 42 through 70. Again, 
lines 42 through 70. That is how RSS tabs are generated in a UI, a user interface application, using C Sharp and the WPF API. Videos 13 and 14 will show a refinement on this process where we have a more functional RSS application. And then in the final video, video 15, I cover the conclusions on this process.